Hey, what's happening? It's Paul Ingram here with Collie Center. I tricked you guys. You thought that Collie Center was commandeered by my friend right here, Rafal. You guys, I know it's been a long time since you've seen Rafal in a Collie <laughs> Center video, so do me a quick favor. Give Rafal a thumbs up for being here today. We've been training all morning, and he's agreed to make this video so that way you guys can continue training with us. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel yet. And uh, make sure to say hi to Rafal in the comments below, all right? Grab your stick. We're gonna be uh, continuing a series of lessons that we did in a previous video. Let's get to the training. In my previous video, I taught three basic drills that we're starting to incorporate our strikes with our footwork because we got to make sure we're getting these two things working together. You know, this is one of the lost skills of Filipino martial arts is the ability to move your weapon and your feet coordinatedly together. We call this calibration. We're calibrating our upper body, what we're doing with our hands, with our footwork. You're going to see a lot of Filipino martial arts, right? They're moving their weapon all fast, which is really cool. It's always cool to see that. And then you see some people training a little bit of footwork here, right? A little bit of some triangles and all that. But you don't really see too many people learning, you know, how do we put these things together? And then how do we actually technically and tactically navigate with these two things working as a single unit? So that's what we're doing in these series of videos, which we're calling the lost skills of Filipino martial arts. We want to take the upper body and the lower body and bring them together. So if you didn't see my previous drill, which I did these three drills in a solo training so you could build the coordination, make sure to go back and look at that video. Watch that video and train it. I've got the link in the description below. I'll pop the link somewhere up here as well and I'll have the link at the end of this video so you can go back and check that out. Get those drills, get these drills done solo. Build the coordination and then come back to this video and then you can start working it out with a training partner. All right, let's get to drill number one. So drill number one, we're working our basics angles one and two with some of that basic circling footwork, okay? And from here, we're, I'm gonna give you two variations to work this drill. We're gonna do a very, very basic coordination of it. So let's take a look at that. We're gonna step forward on the one, and then we're gonna go slightly backwards out to the left on the two, okay? One and two, one and two. Now you can work this where you're making contact with the sticks, just like Raph and I are doing right now. Uh, you want to do this drill just for a little bit so you start understanding the timing of the strikes, right? We want to make sure our strikes are making contact right in the middle between us, right? Right on this zero degrees, this, this center line, what most martial arts like to call it, okay? And then same thing on that too. We don't want to be making contact, right? I don't want Rafal to be making contact way over here because that means what? Well, his tip of his weapon has already traveled through that center of space, meaning I probably actually got hit if he was really attacking me. And then vice versa, right? We want to make sure our training partner is learning the timing and all that as well. So we want to make sure our sticks are making contact right on the center, right between us, right here, okay? So we're going to do that while we're navigating around the circle with our footwork. So one and two. Okay, very simple. Now don't take the next 20 years of your Kali training and just do that, okay? This is just a visual and an auditorial way of learning timing. But we need to take the auditorial stimulus out and start training our eyes, the visual, to be able to see that timing and be able to calculate that timing. So we're gonna do the same drill. We're gonna make sure we're at true wrong range, which is roughly tip to tip. Long range, I could hit his hand, he could hit my hand, but we can't hit each other's bodies. We're gonna do the same drill, but no contact this time. You have to use your eyes and track the weapons and actually use timing to watch them travel through the center at the same time. I know it's tricky. Do the drill and you'll get good at it pretty quickly. So let's take a look. One, two. See, once we have this drill going, then you guys can take turns of knowing and understanding the timing of the hand. Boom, there's that one right to his hand. 
where there's the two that would go through his hand. So because we know how to actually equal each other's timing, we can match that up. Now we know how to speed up a little bit, break that timing, and actually take the hand. If we don't know how to match our training partner's timing, then you're gonna be gambling of when to take the hand. And you know, gambling isn't really much of a skill. It's kind of just based off of luck. We wanna build skill. So I see his timing right there, right? I know we're gonna cross, and then bam, right there, I can take that hand. One, bam, right there, you can see it, I can hit that hand. So obviously, you can train this just like this, and then if you wanted to, you can put some gloves on, and you can start targeting each other's hands. But this is a great drill to start building that timing. Drill number two, or Dalawa. We're gonna be doing the exact same thing, but we're taking a look at our angles three and four. So from here, we're gonna go upward, three and four. Boom, right there, so in and out. In and out. Same thing. Work on that contact just for a little while. And again, you want to make sure, same thing guys, you want to make sure that contact is happening right there on the center, right between us. Right on the center line. Okay, and then continue on, right? Boom, 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 boom. Okay. After you do about a minute or two round of that, same process, range it out to true long range, and uh, no contact, you gotta use your visual to see the timing at the center line. Boom. And if you have to in the beginning, slow it down. Slow it down so you guys can equal the timing. And if it clips a little bit on the three, that's okay, it might happen just because there's a lot of extension on the angle three, so sometimes it may clip a little bit. That's fine, you know, but the main point here is that we wanna work on the visual of equaling each other's timing at the center line. Then we can start learning, you know, how to actually apply tactics and start taking the hand of our opponent. Drill number, tatlo, number three. Now we got that high, low, high drill. So we worked this off of that forward triangle. I came across the base on that horizontal high. I took that broken horizontal to the knee and then up the forward triangle with that backhand horizontal. Now this one, I wanna give you guys a tactic and teach you how to use it. But I'm gonna do that right after I teach you the uh, drill with a partner right here. So you gotta stay tuned here with me till the end of this video. So we're gonna go ahead and work this drill out. Now we are gonna make contact here because I want you to make sure we have this timing between the footwork and the weapon, and then at the end, I'll show you, uh, I'll give you a cool way you can train it and uh, start dominating everybody and take everybody's hands. All right, so from here, we're gonna step off 90 degrees. We're gonna hit that horizontal. When you're training the horizontal right here, you're gonna need to cant up that stick just a little bit, okay? Because if we go perfectly horizontal, we're gonna smash each other in the hands. So we're gonna cant this up just a little bit. Okay. Some people are gonna say, well, you can just train this further away or one person can go under and the other person can go over. But we wanna make sure that we're training at the proper range, number one, for the actual tactic. And number two, we wanna make sure that we're on the proper line as close as possible. So if I'm like underneath his weapon to avoid this, you know, I'm not, I'm not protecting anything up here. So it's, it's a very dangerous position to be in. So we just can't out the wrist so we can train, you know, as close as possible the proper line, but still be learning the timing of the, of the application. All right, so we hit this. We're gonna kind of squat it down a little bit to that knee, and then there's that forward triangle right there. So one, two, three. High, low, high. High, low, high. And then if you can't, see how low you can get. Don't be one of these lazy people where you're like this. See how Rafael's getting low? Look at it. He gets low, he'll whack me right in the knee. I'm way up here. It's gonna be really, move your stick. It's gonna be really hard for me to hit him in the knee. I have to lean in, which then he can drift that four up and hit me right in the face. So we gotta get low. If you wanna hit his knee, check this out. This is why we go stand up. This is why we do this. If I'm here, I can't hit it. Look, I'm locking my elbow out. You guys can see it, unless I, maybe I break my wrist. Oh, I only hit his pants right there. That's not gonna do anything. But if I squat, okay, bop! 
Now I take, uh, I take his hamstring out, his leg goes flying up in the air, and that is true collie right there, my friends. So make sure that you are getting that squat in there, so you're getting that range of motion. Bop, 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 bop. Ooh, And then later you can explode in on that, which we'll show that to you later on. Head over to colliecenter.com, get in Collie Apex, and you're gonna learn all that stuff. Right, work this drill, and then let's take a look at how we can use these horizontals tactically in application. All right, let's take a look at how we can build some basic applications on these horizontal strikes. So we're gonna take a look at drill number one, and then we can plug in some of those horizontal tactics right here. So if we go back to drill number one, our one and twos on the circle right here. So remember what we were training a little bit. We're here. Maybe I see the timing, boom, right there for the hand. Maybe Rafal sees the timing somewhere. Wherever he sees it, boom, right there for the hand. We're training that. Bop, there's his hand. Now at some point, I can also step across the 90 and I can go horizontal and take his hand right there. Okay, so boom, 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 and crack right there. Right, so I'm using the range of the horizontal strike because the horizontal has more range than the diagonal, right? It's just, you can reach a little further with it. At close quarters though, look, if I went horizontal here, his diagonal can out leverage my, uh, my horizontal strike. But at long range, I've, I can beat him with the extension of the weapon right there, right? The extension of that range of the weapon. Horizontal, just it just reaches a lot further. Okay, so that's one way that we can work that. So one, two, and bop, right there. Okay, so I might get a few reps in on that, you know, maybe like every other, we can kind of go back and forth. I do it, bop, I touch the hand or whatever, and then Rafal can do it. Get some timing, get some timing, and then crack right there. And if we both end up doing it, this is why you want your weapon to be canted a little bit, it cancels it out and your hand is protected. You're not getting whacked in your hand at the same time. Okay, so that's one application. We're here, I'll take it, crack right there. You can always throw gloves on, in Kali Apex, in, in our basic training, we teach you how to train without the gloves and we teach you how to train with the gear on as well. So you get to see both versions of training. Okay, boom, that's it. So right here, bop, on that forehand right there, and then right whenever he's got it, boom, right there. So obviously if you can do that on the forehand, you can also work that on the backhand as well. So we're here, one, two, one, and pop right there on the backhand as well. So I'll let you guys play around with the forehand and backhand. Now, strategically, if the hand is already gone, once you've taken that, so we're moving around, I take the hand, pop. The hand goes flying, the weapon goes with it. If you need it to, now I can take that knee out and then boom, take the rest of them out. You don't have to take the knee out, you can just take the rest of them out if you'd like to. You know, but sometimes it's just, it's just kind of fun. But if that's gone, boom, then you come up that forward triangle and then you can take out the rest. So we, I'm just giving you that high, low, high, just as we did in the drill. So let's take a look at it again. So we're here, one, two. Let's take a look at application of what it would be. I'd come around, boom, that would be gone. So he's gonna let go of it for training. His hand would be going with it. Then I come down. Boom, do you know why I don't go forward here? Just in case he had a dagger or something in the other hand. Right? I don't wanna be like this and then I get thrusted right in the head or something. I need to make sure I've got that range right here. And then I can come in and go boom right there and take him out, all right? That's the real collie skills, my friend. So that's how you can start applying it. You can start playing around with some applications right there on your diagonal strikes and on your horizontal strikes. So recap, what did we do in this video right here? We took what I taught in the last previous video of the solo training versions of these drills and we applied them with a training partner. Then what we did is we went through all three of those drills and then we went through some of those basic applications of how you can turn these into coordination drills into tactical application drills. All right, but take your time. There's actually a lot of training in this this can probably, you know, you can work this for the next couple of weeks and get better and better and better at these, uh, at these movements here, at these techniques and tactics and, and these skills, all right? So if you like this video, if you like this training, if you like seeing Rafal, hit that thumbs up button, 
leave a cool comment below. I'll get back to you. And uh, make sure, again, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I was looking at our YouTube analytics. Did you know that 73% of our viewers are not subscribed? Isn't that crazy? So if you are one of those 73% that are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, all right? Just, just click it, it's free. Okay. Uh, also, if you uh, would like to take your support to the Kali Center a little bit further, you can click the join button right below this video and become a sponsor of the channel where you get access to even more exclusive training that we have here on the YouTube channel. We're going to be doing another video right now for our sponsors here on the channel. So if you want to get that training, click the join button and check out becoming a sponsor. And uh, head over to KaliCenter.com, continue your training with us here at Kali Center. Check out our Kali Apex, uh, jump into our Patreon page, and that way you can train directly with us no matter where you are in the world. And uh, get outside, make nature your Kali Dojo, and we'll see you guys next time. Let's go, man. We got training to do.